I am Andrus Kulikowskis. This is Math for Wisdom. We are Let Me Think Scholarship Workshop in Oneonta, New York. Today, we master the philosophy of cleaning adapted for an investigatory community. General theme, cleaning is about ownership. Main principle for scholars, sweet spot between super clean and not clean. Because we want to focus on scholarship, you know, so it's not a hotel where you clean every day and you, you can never see it unclean. But we don't want to be distracted by the crumbs on the floor that say, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up, right? Or we don't, have to, we don't, want, we don't want to focus on scholarship. That's what this is adapted for. So that impulse, when things become noticeably unclean, right? If we can't tell that they're unclean, it's okay. That's the, this is the thing. But as soon as we start to notice that crumb, that hair, etc. Uh, first principle, and this is related to our relationships with truth, our deepest values, Everybody's very different. So different people notice different things. I've had roommates and uh, maybe it's the top of the refrigerator, you know, that's the big issue. Or maybe it is that uh, these papers are piling up, you know, and maybe there should be not never, you know, maybe it should not be overflowing, etc. So everyone is different. And so deal with what you notice, right? Uh, and it does not have to be super fair because God does not have to be good. This is how we grow. Okay, this is how we grow. So, local, personal, immediate, very much in the spirit of what we heard. Seize the moment. Clean it up. Feel morally secure. Right? Um, own your own mess. Also a very important principle we already heard about. What you make. You make it. You enjoy it. You share it. You put it away. You clean it. It is gone. You, know, you enter the space, you op rip open the time fabric, you do your thing like an Australian dream walker, and then you close it up and it's gone. No one ever knew that this dish was used. Fair? Then, um, mm. now, the group owns what the group makes. So that's why, you know, <clears throat> uh, breakfast, lunch, we own individually, but the group owns. So the, there's people who will explain, you know, what we do, and in that case, there's a whole different logic. Uh, but own a responsibility that you care about. So what we've done is we've, um, our team has divided up the house into these necessary things that you'll hear about. Uh, and so, like for example, this space would be one example. Somebody will own it. And that will mean, for example, the floors. But it'll also mean like uh, maybe the ambience. It could mean the flowers. It could mean like uh, this rhythm that every day it should be cleared and then ready for reuse. So, because one of the principles uh, is positive space. Um, we'll also be talking about uh, cluttering, decluttering, recluttering, but the crucial thing is that this is an example of positive space where it should be cleared every day, it should be washed every day, and it should be ready to accept new people. So there will be people who will, you know, whoever is fascinated with this room would be the person who would want to own that responsibility. Uh, have a sensible rhythm for cleaning chores. So each person has their own responsibility. You know, they decide two times a week to sweep, three times a week, right? Um, but we'll do like maybe mop once a week, depending, certainly in that room. Uh, this room maybe is a little bit different. So this will be decided with the, our leader for the chores, um, for negotiating the chores. Um, then um, we'll probably have a uh, cleaning celebration, maybe once a week, like Friday might be a good day. This is... You know, we're not going to figure out everything today, but so that when we have Saturday, we have the weekend, we just feel like, yeah, that's really great. Uh, and then we might do little extra things just because we're so happy together. Uh, appreciate the hierarchy, which is kind of natural, but um, uh, it's like the gross to the kind of like, who cares? Toilets are considered grossest. Um, then let's say bathroom, shower, kitchen, eating surfaces, floors, mirrors, windows. There's this whole anthropological hierarchy probably, but like you don't take the sponge for the kitchen and clean the toilet with it. That's just a mysterious thing, right? I mean, I don't think, but there's these, so obey the hierarchy, figure it out, uh, correct me on it. I'm not a master on this. So we will rotate the worst jobs, which basically is um, the toilets and the, uh, I'll explain that. Um, yeah, why don't I just, that's, I think that's what I'm switching over to. 
it's our culture. It's egalitarian. Okay, first of all. Like, so we don't have any caste system. There's certain things like, because it's a gross thing, like we're all untouchable in a certain speak, or we're all touchable, or however. No, we're, no, we, no, we're untouchable. That's right. We don't touch each other without permission. So, but we rotate that. And so I'll be first today. Uh, our team leaders uh, for the cleaning team will be the first people, you know, one, two, three. And by then we'll figure out uh, with some of our master consultants, uh, how do we clean the toilet? So uh, uh, this is philosophical. So, um, but um, what does it mean in practice? Okay. And this is what, so this is one of my responsibilities. Um, this is like my chore is to just make sure that that's happening, that people know uh, what, what day they're on, that they signed up for. It'll be rotated. Uh, but the crucial thing now, um, there are, this is a very interesting, and this is a religious thing. It's like a religious principle. But in a certain religion, like if you're supposed to clap, uh, if you're supposed to, let's say, wiggle your ear, you know, seven times a day. But the <laughs> deal is, is that you're supposed to, it's, you know, but it's no one's business if you do, you see. And uh, so long as you don't tell anybody that you don't, and that anybody, you know, you can't champion this idea, oh, you're not, you know, don't wiggle your ear, whatever. No, you do it, uh, well, or just, anyway, so the deal is, if you have something <laughs> like, like, what does toilet, cleaning the toilet mean, basically, you know, we'll have the message, but like, it's, you clean the feces out of it so they don't show, like, you maybe, you know, look for feces that are there, <laughs> that, you know, escaped, uh, you, um, clean the whole thing like it's a beautiful statue right like you can really just kind of it's a moral purging for some people like me then you know like certainly any kind of little hair right like anything that would say I'm not clean right? you, you so that would be like one I think a normal attitude to this type of thing so but you only do it once every you know a couple weeks or so but I can appreciate certain people you know they they just even have trouble touching the thing so with their hands or whatever, um, I'm not going to uh, watch. So instead what I'm doing is that we have a basket, right? This is a basket. And, and we'll probably work on this. These are bags, kitchen bags. This is what we're, it looks like we're using. You pull out a kitchen bag. So it's okay that they're kitchen bags. I think that's not an issue. This is because it's, it's but just don't use it. In <laughs> this is kitchen bags. You have options. You can put the, take the whole bag out and put it in. Of course, we have three bathrooms. You'll be doing all the same bathrooms on the day. Or maybe you're ecologically like insistent. You can reuse this bag. Now, if no one sees, no one knows, no one cares. <laughs> it's their secret, right? Like they were ecologically subversive, right? I don't care. So your f moral freedoms are multiple. And, well, just so long as we don't know. We don't. But what we want to see is the empty bag. There's an empty bag. And I'm going to check, is the bag empty? Do you see? Like, and if the bag is not empty, we will have a philosophical Okay. Well, privately first and publicly. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Okay, so that's I think that's uh, that's the kind of philosophical solution to this. That you know, see the point being that in the practical sense, see this is all religion, right? Practical sense. If half of us clean the toilet, right, it'll be clean. It's all. I think. I mean, my standards are low, but I kind of think it's they're all clean. And I, so, congratulations. I'm just gonna clap for everybody. That they're very clean. <laughs> Now, now we move into like the sociological philosophy of toilet etiquette, and this will be not discussed now because it's too personal. But I just want to give some variations. Uh, this will be democratically solved. But I'll give you four choices, and you can come up with more. Um, the first choice was when I lived with my grandmother, uh, who was uh, from Lithuania and in Chicago, and so she was in the ground floor, and I was my bedroom was on the up floor, and we lived together four years, but. After a while, I kind of learned, she said, Andres, uh, you set down the seat. And I go, yes. <laughs> she goes, don't set down the seat. And I go, why? I mean, I, I shouldn't say why to my grandmother, but I was just confused. I didn't say why. But she goes, Andres, I sit on the ceramic. Okay. Then I thought, man, I'm really in touch with something, you know, ancient. Matriarchal teeth. I don't know. So I had that very beautiful experience. That she's passed away now. She was ninety-seven. But that's a, that's a very legitimate solution. Uh, very much honored. Now in the seventies, uh, my mother was a feminist. So I'm raised that you know we're supposed to 
the, what she read in Ms. Magazine was that uh, the seat is always, well, there's three seats. No, are they? Yeah, no, there's the ceramic, there's a seat that has a hole in it, then there's the cover. When little boys use the toilet, they lift up all the seats, they urinate, then they close down the seat. And I, th I never understood the logic of it because it's a lot of seat lifting up and down. But the, well, the first part of the because you know, we splatter, like it's easy to splatter. Okay, that's the thing. But the, the other part of the logic was like, it always goes down. This is our 70s feminism was that, uh, I think maybe the logic is that half the people shouldn't have to think about it. Let the other half people, you know, that's just seemed kind of the fair, you know, men think about it and men have problems with splattering and men, you know, most of the issues are men. So men should lower the seat after that. That's an option that needs to be democratically considered if we want to go like retro 70s. Now my father and I, so that's like at home, you know, when I visit my parents, see, but in the office where I spend the night and my father's, it's like, no, my father said, no, we lift up the seat, you see, because we're men. Why are you lowering the seat? <laughs> because we urinate and we don't want to be lifting up because you urinate more frequently than when you sit. Then the fourth option is, I've seen it used here though, you close the whole thing. That's kind of interesting. Like you just kind of like keep it all closed. Now, now uh, if you know, and that's important, like when you live with a smelly toilet, you know, and you can't do anything about it, you do that. So these aren't very smelly. Aren't they? Anyway, so there's a whole democratical thing about like that, which we'll continue later. But the one thing I think we'll all agree on, this is really mostly a men's issue, is that uh, there should be no splatter, no hair, you know, and etc. And so what my mother taught me is like, you wipe the seat. It's not a bad habit, like, just every time you see it, you don't, just take a little piece of toilet paper and wipe the seat for the other gender, or however many genders we have. So that is, I think, her solution. I like that, I think it's simple. Don't think about it. It's like locking your bike. You don't think like, should I lock my bike? Shouldn't I lock my bike? You just lock it anywhere. Don't think about it. Now that's enough about toilets, but uh, that's it. But uh, what I do want to say is uh, one more thing. Uh, that's um, that's the main thing. It's a religion. You know, we cover the religion. We cover the the reality. Uh, with showers, there's a very simple thing. My mother taught also is when you shower, there's a sponge. Scrub the shower at the end of your bathing showering thing. And if half of us do that, we'll never need to clean the shower or the bathtub. Okay, just. Do a little exercise, you know, and so maybe half of us will forget, half of us, but I think if enough of us do that. And then the final thing is, um, oh, take out the papers. So these are considered um, uh, trash, trash, and they go in the um, gray uh, trash box, trash bins. And that, my dear friends, is the philosophy of cleaning. <laughs> The highlight of the day was Andreas's philosophical presentation on cleanliness. And that was just, it made me so happy. I've read books on philosophy. I think today I saw what philosophy is. And it was so, so great. And I want more of that. Yeah!